Hi everybody, my name is Greg Bragg. I'm the Specialty Account Sales Manager for Celestron. Uh, today I'm going to answer some questions that we get from our beginners uh, to help you get a little bit more familiar with your telescope and how to operate your telescope. Um, this question is, I got a new telescope, I really can't figure out how to find anything, I can't really see anything through the telescope, and if I do see something through the telescope it's not clear. So that's a combination of questions that everybody encounters when they get their first telescope. So hopefully I can give you some tips and tricks on how to actually solve those problems. First, I wanna tell you about the telescope because it, it does have a bearing on what happens when you first get your telescope and trying to look through it. This is called a refractor. This is actually our StarSense Explore DX uh, series. Uh, it's a new telescope on the market and if you're new to, to astronomy and you're looking for a new telescope, this telescope is a great starting point. It uses smartphone technology, it uses plate solving technology, lots of cool things that are in the astronomy arena, but it's designed to help uh, find objects really quickly for a beginner. Most people have a hard time finding anything more than a couple of bright objects, maybe planets and the moon, but this actually helps you find other objects, directs you to those objects by uh, smartphone technology, and you just follow the information on the phone, move the scope around and it helps you find those objects. Uh, I promised I wouldn't do a commercial, but I can't help it, I love the telescope. Uh, so back to the question at, my, at hand. Um, I can't see through my telescope, what am I doing wrong? So the refractor design has a lens at the front and a diagonal at the back and it uses an eyepiece to, to uh, illuminate the object you're looking at to your eye. Uh, all those things in combination work to first off help you find the object, secondly help you to get it sharp, and then the magnification of the eyepiece changes the size of that object. So this telescope comes with two eyepieces. It comes with a 10 millimeter eyepiece and it comes with a 25 millimeter eyepiece. The 25 millimeter, even though it doesn't sound mathematically right, is the least powerful of these two eyepieces. The 25 millimeter has less power than the 10 millimeter. They also have a different opening. You can see the opening in these eyepieces. The 25 millimeter has a little bit larger opening than the 10 millimeter. That's the glass you can see through there. Uh, that This makes it a lot easier for you to find the objects in the telescope as well. So we recommend that you start with your telescope and your lowest power eyepiece in the diagonal to, to help you get more comfortable uh, finding the objects and get more comfortable uh, using the focuser to actually make the, the uh, object sharp. So we're gonna recommend that you do this during the daytime. Most beginners, first thing they wanna do is, as soon as it gets dark, get their telescope outside and try to find objects in the night sky. It's not so easy, especially if you try to use too much power. So by using low power and doing it in the daylight to start with, you can get much more comfortable with your telescope from um, an operational standpoint and then learn how to do the alignment of the finder scope and other things that, that will help you find objects later in the night sky. So we're gonna tell you to find an object that's a couple of hundred yards away, uh, just in your neighborhood, get on your street, look down the street, find a house down, the, down the, the road, find a telephone pole down the road, something like that, that you can uh, easily find by just pointing the telescope and looking down the tube to kind of align the tube with the object that you're trying to uh, center in the eyepiece. That'll give you a good, easy start. And then get in the eyepiece and move the telescope around until you actually find the object that you want in the eyepiece. All right, so use the lowest power eyepiece, point the telescope down the tube, maybe like you're aiming a rifle or something in a, in a sort of a fashion like that, and that way you will be able to find the object that you want to center in the eyepiece. Once you get that object in the eyepiece, then you use the focuser to sharpen it. The focuser is a draw tube, and you can probably see this focuser moving in and out here, right? As I move the dial, and I'm doing it on the opposite side, but as I move the dial, that moves the eyepiece and the diagonal to make the image that's coming through the front elements <clears throat> clear in the eyepiece. And all you do is go forward and backward until you get it into a position where you can see the object get clearer and clearer and clearer until you get it its clearest, and then you're all set. Now you've learned how to focus the uh, telescope. And, that, and that's really not all that challenging, but if you, don't, if you don't understand how it functions and doing it at night, it's doubly hard. So the best thing to do is do it during the day. The next thing you wanna do is once you get your telescope on that object, the telephone pole or somebody's chimney down the street on their house, 
uh, you want to align the finder scope. The finder scope is, uh, there's a lot of these out on the market. This one is called a red dot finder. And when you turn it on, it illuminates a little red dot against the uh, outer objective of this uh, finder scope. Some have a little target, some have a couple of multiple targets, some aren't illuminated, some are illuminated, but you wanna align the finder with whatever object you have in the telescope that's in the center of the eyepiece. And that, and that is really basically what I just said, aligning the finder to the telescope. So we're back to that telephone pole. We've looked down the street, we're looking at the very top of the telephone pole. We wanna then get the very top of the telephone pole on that red dot in the finder scope. So it, it turns on and then you adjust left and right and up and down until you get that red dot on the top of the telephone pole down the street. Make sure to remember to cut it off after you're done because this only lasts 10 to 15 hours. If you leave it on, you put it back away for a couple of days, you come back to it, it's not gonna work. This is really critical in helping you find the objects in the night sky once you make that alignment between the telescope and the finder scope. So, once you've done those two things, now you're ready to go out in the night sky. I mentioned this is a refractor. There are other telescopes on the market. Essentially, they use a similar focusing system. A Newtonian is a larger tube with, a, with no lens in the front and a mirror in the back and a diagonal up here instead of back here. It still has a similar style focuser with the draw tube that moves in and out with a, a gear knob. And that uh, works exactly the same way as this. You align it exactly the same way. You look down the tube on the object. You get the eyepiece, the lowest power eyepiece in the, in the uh, draw tube. And then you use the knobs up and down to get that sharp. Those are uh, 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 essentially the same. A schmidt cassegrain on the other hand, pushes that mirror that's in the back. It has a lens in the front and a mirror in the back, and it uses a knob on the back of the telescope, and that knob actually pushes that mirror inward and outward. That takes a lot more turns than a little draw tube focuser like this. So if you start off with, as a beginner, with a schmidt cassegrain which is a great telescope to start with, you wanna make sure you understand that that knob that pushes that mirror forward and backward actually uh, has an enormous amount of rotations, sometimes 20, 30, 40 rotations in both directions, 30 or 40 this way and 30 or 40 the other way. That pushes that mirror backwards and forward in, in real fine movements compared to the draw tube. See how fast this moves that tube in and out. Uh, it moves that mirror very slow, but once you get the object sharp in a Schmidt Cassegrain, it's really beautiful. So just remember that sometimes you may have to turn that a lot more than you think, it'll stop and you'll just go back the other direction until it stops. And at some point between the beginning and the end of that movement forward and backwards, it, it will get a, a, the object sharp. Remember to start with a less powered eyepiece and look at something during the day to get comfortable with how that works. And you'll get really good at it. Once you get into the night sky, you won't even have to point down the telescope like you did uh, initially to get that telephone pole in the uh, eyepiece. You'll be able to use the red dot finder, you'll look at the moon, you'll just move, turn the red dot finder on, you move it around until you get the red dot finder pointed directly at the moon, and you should look right in the eyepiece and the moon should be there. You see Jupiter off in the distance, point the red dot at Jupiter, Jupiter should be in the eyepiece. And that's what you want to do, is to get comfortable with how the functionality of the telescope is, the focuser is, the eyepieces to use, and, and then get used to the uh, uh, alignment of the red dot finder. After you find it with the low power eyepiece, then by all means, go to the higher power eyepiece and bring that object closer and bigger into your eye and enjoy the night sky. Hope you uh, learned something there. I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you very much. Bye.